Hello and welcome to this week's video. This is going to be what I bake during my week. And normally I share vegetarian cooking recipes on here, but I don't think most people do um, carnivorous baking anyway. So this is just a normal old what I bake in my week. I'm here at home with my parents, so this is great because my dad's actually taking a picture of me right now. I'm feeling really famous here. So this is the last recipe that I'm making chronologically, but I'm gonna put it first in the video because I thought I would just kind of talk you through, um, I don't know, baking <laughs> as I make these. And then I'm gonna link this recipe um, in the down bar, but I just looked it up on Pinterest. I'm gonna make vegan gluten-free pumpkin muffins, and I'm gonna make them into chocolate pumpkin muffins because it sounded kind of boring otherwise. So I am in my parents' kitchen which is great because, as you can probably tell, it's much bigger than my kitchen is at home. And there's almost always somebody in this kitchen, so when I realized nobody was downstairs right now, I decided to jump on this and film this intro for you guys. This week I'm making, I tried to make it kind of a typical um, week in my baking life. So I will be sharing with you a pizza recipe for pizza crust. Also my French bread that I like to make. Also a no-bake vegan date fudge bar. That really doesn't belong in a baking video, I realize, but you know, you get it. Um, I used to be really intense, and my friends will tell you this when I was younger about measuring everything really specifically in baking recipes, and now I don't do that. But I do think it's important if you're just starting out to be pretty specific with your measurements because baking is a science. Um, unlike cooking where you can throw things in and it you know, might not taste good, but it should at least kind of work. I'd say on a typical week in my baking life, a lot of times I'm making pizza and I do make the pizza crust from scratch. And then usually I make some type of bread, whether it is French bread or um, Portuguese wheat bread. This is not the right thing. I'm trying to make a flax egg and I just tried to make it with coconut sugar. I knew it would be really risky to talk to you guys while doing this, but gotta live on the edge. Okay, flax egg with flax. Groundbreaking. Pizza crust, normal bread or sandwich bread, um, and then oftentimes I'll make a muffin or like a banana bread, like quick bread kind of thing, and then sometimes like a dessert. I'd say I cook like, I bake like three things a week maybe on average. And then because it's only me and my husband and baby, sometimes I'll put things in the freezer too. And the way that I do that is I bake them, I let them cool, and then I put them in a Ziploc bag and then I put them in another Ziploc bag. So I double bag them and then I put them in my freezer. And when I wanna thaw them, I pull them out, usually set them on my counter or sometimes in my fridge and I leave them double bagged because if you take them out of that bag, uh, then the moisture, Sometimes it'll be like crystallized on the outside. All that moisture will be gone and they'll end up really dry. So you don't wanna do that. So definitely leave the bags on them as they're thawing. But I've never had a problem with um, freezer burn or anything as long as you do that. And it, I like to try to eat them within like three months. So what I'll often do is I really love to entertain. So I will um, make like Portuguese wheat bread and that makes two loaves. So I'll make one and serve it for my family or entertaining and then I will freeze the other one so that next time I'm having company it's so easy I can just pull that out when it looks like I've slated away for a whole day but really I made the bread you know a couple months ago so I really like to have muffins around because as my husband is working from home it makes a really good afternoon snack for both of us but I do have some criteria that I like to follow when I'm making muffins just for our family. If I'm having company, then I don't care. I'll make whatever muffin. But if it's just to specifically have on hand for snacks, then I really like it to be a muffin that has some protein in it. Um, and usually I like some whole wheat flour or almond meal in there um, to break up all that white flour because usually it's gonna be an afternoon snack for us and I'm trying not to crash in the afternoon. I'll have it with my coffee and hopefully I'll get a second wind usually is what I'm going for, not for a nap. Although, I love naps. 
So like this recipe has a lot of almond meal in it, which is awesome. Um, oftentimes I will also add chopped nuts to muffins, even if it doesn't call for them. But today I'm adding chocolate chips, even though it doesn't call for them. <laughs> it's all about balance, my friends. Oven is preheated. We are getting there. <sighs> These are like pumpkin spice muffins, pretty much. There's some cloves, nutmeg, cinnamon, and um, we'll see if they're good. It's also Halloween while I'm making this, so making pumpkin spice muffins seems to be the appropriate thing to do. Never ever measure your salt over your ingredients. I just did it, but do as I say, not as I do. Here at home, I always end up drinking a lot of coffee because they've got a 12 cup normal um, drip pot. So today I'm using one of my dad's favorite mugs. No coffee, no worky because I've got to edit this video today. So hopefully it's gonna give me some nice inspo. We've got all of the dry ingredients and wet ingredients. I'm gonna pour the wet ingredients into the dry and just fold them together, not over mixing, even though I'm using gluten-free flour, so I don't even think there's any gluten to develop, but you don't wanna over mix your muffins. Put that on a coffee mug. And I'm gonna put like, I don't know, half a cup maybe of vegan mini chips. We're gonna see if we need more than that. I just think baking is so nice, especially this time of year. I think bread baking is the most rewarding, but if you are not um, that into baking yet, I recommend starting maybe with muffins or, and I'm gonna do this in another video, there's a bread recipe that makes like these beautiful like pools of bread, really crusty and beautiful. It's no need, it takes 12 hours to um, rise. So you just leave it on your countertop for like 12 hours and then you bake it and nobody will believe how easy it is to make. I'm gonna make that in another video, just didn't happen this week, but it is one of my favorites if you haven't tried it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you. Your mind's gonna be blown. Okay, here's what my batter looks like and I'm gonna try some because it's vegan anyway, so I'm in my mom's kitchen, so I'm really not allowed to eat raw eggs here. That was a rule growing up. So good. I'm gonna put these in the muffin tins now. I'm gonna throw these into the oven now for like 25 minutes and I'll let you know what they look like when they come out and how good they are. So Saffron, Joseph, and I are here, <laughs> and we're gonna be working on some raw salted chocolate snack bars right now. Um, I'm actually gonna be giving them away to some friends who are taking care of my plants while I'm gone. <laughs> They're an awesome snack or dessert, and all the ingredients are really great, so I love these. The recipe will be linked in the down bar. It is from a blog. We'll just hop right into it and show you the process. It's really pretty simple, so we'll probably just speed it up for you. The base of these no-bake bars are actually made in the food processor, which I love. Um, I was doubling this recipe, which made it a little trickier because everything pretty much uh, filled to the very top of my processor, so it took quite a while to blend. But it's just dates, oats, coconut oil, some salt. Um, I think that's it in the base. It's really simple. And then you put it in the bottom of your um, pan and uh, squish it out until it's flat. And then you just put it in the freezer. It really takes no time at all. all I think the hardest part of this is pitting the dates. And you can even buy dates that are pre-pitted. And then the topping is coconut oil and cocoa powder and maple syrup. And the first time I made this, I could not believe how fudgy it was. When you pour it on, it really just tastes like chocolate with dairy in it or something. Um, but 
it's really decadent because it is so oily. Um, I recommend storing these in the refrigerator or the freezer because the coconut oil in the topping will melt pretty quickly as you eat them. So definitely be aware of that, but it's, it's really worth it. It is the next day. My coffee is steeping in my French press. I just painted my nails. This is Essie's Merino Cool for any of you fellow nail polish junkies. And I'm going to cut up those um, chocolate snack bar things because I think I'm going to have one as a little mid-morning snack before Saffron wakes up. It's 3.30 now and I'm going to start making pizza dough right now because we are having pizza for dinner tonight. I normally use a recipe from an old church cookbook of my parents, um, but because I'm only gonna make one pizza tonight, I'm actually gonna use a Pinterest recipe because my normal recipe makes two pizza doughs. We'll link that in the down bar. It's a garlic herb pizza dough and I've made it once and it worked pretty well. So come along with me and we'll make it together. I know working with yeast can really scare people, but I don't think you'll have a problem with it as long as you follow a couple of steps. So I always proof my yeast whether the recipe says so or not. So I will take my water and yeast and also a sprinkle of sugar. I will put that in to my stand mixer bowl without any of the other ingredients. Just combine them and let them sit for five or 10 minutes and make sure that there's a little bit of foaminess happening just to ensure that that yeast is alive and going to work for you to help your bread to rise. Yeast is a living organism so you want to feed it well and take good care of it like you would a pet. So the water needs to be warm, just needs to feel a little bit warmer than your body temperature. I think it's like a hundred... She's playing with a cup. I think it's like 110 degrees. I'm not sure you can get a thermometer if you're really scared. Um, but that's really important and then mix it with your yeast and just watch what happens. The dough has risen and is all ready to go. Just need to chop up my toppings, get everything assembled and into the oven and we will be ready for dinner. I really enjoy making pizza because it is one of the few meals that I make regularly that doesn't require me to follow a recipe except for the dough. Um, I always just look in my fridge and see what cheese and what produce needs to be used up or even what sauces if I have got some barbecue sauce or um, hot wing sauce that I've just had for a while and I want it out of my fridge, I'll put that on there. Um, or even uh, spaghetti sauce or some old uh, diced tomatoes that I used earlier in the week. 
pretty much anything goes on a pizza and I love that every time I make a pizza it's different and it's an experiment and you get to learn how flavors go together. So this one had feta cheese and Kalamata olives on it because that's what was in my fridge and I wanted to use them up before uh, we left for our trip. So it was kind of a Mediterranean um, sort of pizza and I also roasted a red pepper and um, peeled that and put it on top. I actually had never done that myself. Growing up, we always put roasted red peppers on pizzas, but I'm gonna do that in the future. When we wake Hear the birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun We know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright Crazy, but things are finally right 